This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and this week we are uh, finally getting to take a look at some uh, tunnel port heads for my customer's 465 tunnel port build. And I uh, just got the heads back from being ported, and we did a few other uh, tricks as well, modern upgrades I would call it. Uh, the, the tunnel port head is from 1967. They were not available in any production vehicle but were available uh, over the counter from Ford. Um, they were used in uh, NASCAR and some other high performance racing venues and uh, they, are, they are meant to be used for very high performance and racing applications. So if we just take, start to take a look, um, the differences, this is a trick flow head here. This is a modern piece. This is the 1967 tunnel port head the ports are are massive and there's four fingers uh, down inside the port in the 60s the general way of thinking was let's just make it bigger and bigger and bigger and um, as we got more involved with motorsports through the decades we in technology we found that we need to make things smaller and smaller so this trick flow head is roughly a 170 cc port. I have not poured this intake port yet, but I would venture to say that it's a lot bigger than 170 cc's. As part of our porting processes, we actually make the port smaller. You can see that we have put some epoxy in the floor of the port to make it smaller. Um, this is necessary for higher flow. So these heads flow uh, around 380 CFM. So I don't, I don't want to knock on the port volume too much because this head, you know, is a 330-ish uh, CFM intake port. Uh, this is a 380-ish intake port. Um, so it, you know, it, it makes the horsepower. It makes the makes the flow. Um, but we generally make them smaller to get to that point uh, up until you start to pour the bottom of the floor. These heads will pretty much bottom out at 340, 350 CFM, and then they will start to get real turbulent after 625 or 650 lift. These heads, as they sit right now, will support way over 800 lift, 900 lift, and it's uh, the the epoxy in the, in the floor of the port that, that accomplishes that. So I'm going to move this trick flow head out of the way and show you some of the other things that we do with the tunnel port head. All right, so once we got the head flipped over, we can see uh, the casting number, the engineering number. This is a, a 67 uh, head verifying the date code. Uh, one of the things that we do is install bronze valve guides uh, from the factory. The tunnel port head uses a 3-8 stem valve, which adds a considerable amount of weight, especially when you're dealing with a two and a quarter intake valve. Not only that, but we mill uh, the spring surface of the head so that we can use a modern locator. And the bronze valve guide allows us to use uh, a modern Viton valve seal. So we also, um, most of the time, the rocker stand uh, holes are pretty much worn out and this is this engine is going to be a solid roller so we're going to be running some um, higher spring pressures so what we've done is we've installed some time certs into the rocker stand holes and um, that just gives the insert more um, uh, surface area to grab onto and we're keeping the inside thread size the same as the rocker stand stud 3816 um, we sink these down and then I come back with a die grinder and open up the oil feed hole in case I need to run a restrictor or something in there, which I probably will do. But, uh, that's the work that's done there. And exhaust side is ported. So here's the valves that we're going to use. These are SI stainless two and a quarter with an 11 30 seconds stem, uh, standard FE overall length. The exhaust side is a 175, 11 30 seconds SI stainless valve. Again, 
FE standard length. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna clean, uh, the heads have already been washed, but I'm gonna run uh, some solvent through the guides, make sure they're clean. And then we're gonna start mocking up our install heights and take a look at our valve springs and see what we need to set these springs up for in order to get the correct spring pressures for our camshaft. All right, so we're gonna take a look at our cam card real quick. Um, lobe lift is 390 on the intake side, 381 on the exhaust side. You always wanna do your, the math yourself because these gross valve lift numbers are based off of the smallest rocker ratio that was offered for that engine family. So in this instance with an FE, um, the lobe lift on the cam card is gonna be multiplied by 173. We are not gonna have a 173 rocker, we're gonna have a 176. So this point, um, let me switch hands here. 0 0.390 multiplied by 1.76. It's going to be a 686 gross lift instead of the 670 gross lift. Uh, when we subtract our lash, 18,000 slash, we're going to have 668 net. On the intake side, um, same situation, 381 times 1.76. We're looking at 670 gross. And we're going to subtract our 18 thousandths. And we're going to come up with 652. So this is what I'm going to use um, to set up the valve springs. We're gonna, that's the amount of lift that the engine is going to see. Um, minus some um, deflection with uh, the push rods and rocker arm geometry and things like that. So, but we wanna set up our valve springs for, for this lift. So let's take a look at our valve springs and see what we got. Okay, so here's our valve spring package for this engine. Um, I only use high quality brands for, for valve springs. Uh, you'll see me use a lot of pack, uh, manly and comp cams. Um, for this particular engine with a solid roller, I wanted some good valve springs, so we went with PAC. This is a 1243 solid roller spring. We went with a set of their titanium uh, retainers. And also we're going with their um, hardened steel valve spring locator. So this is the good thing about doing all of the uh, machine work to the, to the spring seat of the head. See this valve spring locator sits nice and flush and it sits down where it's supposed to be and it's also located by the guide. Um, you, you wouldn't want to put um, a valve spring on here uh, that's only located by the retainer and then you have the bottom of the spring dancing on the cylinder head. So that's a no-no. So we're going to um, see what these springs want to be set up at. And then we're gonna check our install height with um, no shims or anything and, and see what we're doing. So um, this is a 1243 spring. Install height is, or installed valve spring pressure is 240 at 1900. And then uh, 625 open at 1200. So that's at 700 lift. We're only gonna have um, around 650 lift. So what I'll probably end up doing, uh, since we're that far away from coil bind, is uh, choke this down a little bit so that we'll get a little bit more um, seat pressure and um, bump the open pressure up as well. So let's um, let's get some install height numbers and see where we are with this with this uh, valve and the way that it sits, and then we can go from there. Okay, so we got our spring mic on here and um, ran into a little bit of a snag. We are at two inches and 25 thousandths on the install height. And I remembered uh, when I saw that, that most of your pack retainers are plus 100. And that's not gonna work out for us. Um, eventually we need to be somewhere a little bit south of um, 1900 install height and even with a minus 50 lock and a shim uh, 60,000 shim we're not going to get there so 
what I'm going to do is snag another set of retainers. Um, I'll have a set of uh, comp cams titanium retainers here on Monday. And um, what we'll do is we'll roll through the uh, assembly process on, on Monday. And I'll have another video for you then. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up now. And um, just a wonderful set of tunnel port heads. Um, tunnel ports are my favorite. They are just exotic. Not a lot of people have them. Uh, they have a racing pedigree. And they just flat out make horsepower when they are prepped correctly. And um, look forward to getting this build going. Uh, hopefully the pistons will get here in the next week or so. Um, so we can get some assembly going. But uh, here's what we got so far. Alright guys, um, I'm going to have another video on the 352. I finally got the linkages and everything set up. So I'll have that uh, video done this this weekend. And uh, Monday we'll finish up these tunnel port heads. So thanks for watching. And um, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports.